Hello Thoth TV and all you YouTubers out there. So we now have a new podcast called the No Holds Barred Witchcraft Podcast. Now it is sponsored by Thoth Witchcraft and it does involve me and Chris basically talking about all sorts of witchy things. If you go to any of the good podcast providers, um, then you can download it. You just need to search for No Holds Barred Witchcraft. For those of you who don't have podcasting apps, then you can actually listen to the latest webs, uh, the latest episodes on our website. All you need to go is go on the website on the menu and then click on podcast. You'll go to the page and at the bottom of the page there will be a player that will show you the latest podcast podcast episodes so what i've decided to do is i thought we might as well put on our first episode here on youtube so after i finish speaking in a minute i'm just going to play through the first episode of the no holds barred witchcraft podcast so i hope you like it and here we go Hello and welcome to the No Holds Barred Witchcraft podcast. This is the inaugural episode, which basically means at this point, being the first episode, we have not got a clue what we're doing. So if you're lucky enough to be checking this out from the archive, you probably might want to skip to at least episode number 100, where hopefully if this podcast is still going, you know, there might be something a little bit more entertaining. But again, because this is our first podcast, I thought that it might be a nice idea for us to both introduce ourselves. So I'm Liam. And I'm Chris. And together we are co-founders of thoughtwitchcraft.com and we run the No Holds Barred Witchcraft Secret Facebook group which I'm not supposed to tell you about because it's a secret, but there we go. Wow. <laughs> cat's out of the bag now. The cat's out of the bag now. So I suppose we should really talk about where this podcast has come from, I guess, and then maybe a little talk about, I suppose, a little bit about the rest of what we do and who we are. So do you want to kick that off? <laughs> or do you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> it depends how personal we're getting straight away. Well, I know that basically the 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 Facebook group came about because I was a little pissed off at some point, and in the middle of the night, I think it was, if you check back, it was late at night, I thought, I've checked out all of these Facebook groups, these Facebook groups to do with witchcraft and occultism, and it's just meme posting idiots. And uh, Is that where I'm allowed to quote one? You could quote one if you like. <laughs> like feisty witches oh <laughs> yes them but also obviously some of the what would you say cooler more badass practitioners that we've met um always tend to go on about how they get kicked out of these groups for answering honestly messages and you know adding to threads and stuff so i thought well and talking about real witchcraft yes talking about real witchcraft and you're not allowed to do that on any of these these groups so i thought well if we made a group where there's no real rules because a lot of these groups you get attacked instantly if you don't share the same views as the admin or the people that create these groups so or the same meme yeah exactly so <laughs> if i set this up in the middle of the night as a kind of a joke but so far, we've got over 100 members. We get people post regularly. Quite interesting things that you don't really see everywhere else. Um, and it's been one of those nice... Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's one of those nice things that everyone that's gone in there has been an actual practitioner. They're actually practicing magic as opposed to just wanting to go with the witchy aesthetic and to make themselves feel like they're a witch. I mean, there are quite... I think you'd agree, wouldn't you? There's... um. And for... <laughs> The ones that don't want to find the latest book on by, you know, Scott Cunningham. Yeah, exactly. There's actual people Re in there. Reverb, reverb. Yeah, there's people in there that actually that actually practice and they get up to all sorts of stuff. Now, OK, they might not post regularly and they might not post a lot of information about what they're doing, because at the end of the day, 
witchcraft is still quite a secretive thing and if you're it's a personal journey that a lot of people are on but the point of having a bunch of people together in a group that can share things and talk about subjects at a higher level or at any bloody level that isn't just the usual crap of like this candle yeah like this candle and post this meme you know but that, that was kind of where the idea came about so we literally had at the time, we had just three rules, essentially. In fact, I think we've still only got three rules in there now. <laughs> yeah, I don't, th- I don't think we've added any further. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice. And I kind of got the um, old bard witchcraft is literally supposed to, you know, essentially get the point across that if you are easily offended, you know, there's no point in you being here because your views will be changed, won't they? I mean, there are certain members not naming any names that will instantly uh, attack you. (laughs) (laughs) Attack attack you out of love for pushing your craft further. So if you say something stupid and people disagree, they will be quite forceful with you and it's up for you. Yeah, love love you you really really hard. hard. Top love. But, you know, it's a case if you've got to defend yourself and there's a lot of modelly coddling, modelly coddling, model coddling that goes on. Um, and we, we really didn't want that. The real world isn't like that. You know, this isn't a safe space. You know, we have created safe spaces like we've got the Witchcraft Live Facebook group, which is all about beginners and stuff like that. So, you know, if you are easily offended or, you know, not too sure about things and finding your foot in them, that might. That one's yeah, probably that might better be a little for you. Bit better. But like the, there are literally just three rules. Rule number one is no whining wimps. So unlike other groups, we don't care about being kind or courteous. We prefer you speak your mind. If you have a mouth like a sewer in the real world, then you'll probably speak like that here. Um, rule number two, witchcraft, occult and magical topics only. Uh, it's funny how it's called No Holds Barred Witchcraft is because this group is about witchcraft. Technically gossip. Yeah, technically gossip and a, about the occult world and stuff. And it's still on topic, but we don't want any rubbish, you know. And if you are going to post something and it's a political statement or whatever, then it needs to be relevant to witchcraft, you know. If there is a politician you don't like... By all means, post about it, but write about how you're going to go about getting rid of them or cursing them. Yeah, or killing them or whatever it is. Um, Magically, of course, we don't want you actually doing it in the physical world. But so far, magically, you could do a curse on them and stuff like that and get away with it. That's still within the realms of the law, at least in this country it is. Um, Rule number three. And if you've not... (laughs) I was going to say, and if you don't know how to curse, there's a really good little video about how to curse in yeah, Witchcraft Live. I think I did that one. <laughs> um, rule number three, of course, and the most important rule, you will be insulted due to the fact we try not to police people's free speech. Um, you probably will be insulted by something someone has posted or even directly. And by uh, by being part of the group, you're OK with that. So we're not really creating a place for people to be horrible to people. But if someone is saying, well, your practice is rubbish because of this, this, this and this reason, then that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. We don't have a problem with that. If they're just attacking you and not offering up a reason for that, they're attacking you as a person, then that's a no now. You know, it's basically about if you're going to insult someone, you should be insulting their work. And offering up a better alternative to that, not just, you know, being nasty for the sake of being nasty. So it's not like it's a terrible, um, (laughs) it's not that terrible, but at the same time, you need to make sure that because people are used to these safe spaces and stuff, whereby if I say, oh, the rule of three and the Wiccan read and that, and someone comes along and says, that's a load of crap, you have to be able to they need to have a bloody good reason to actually yeah. argue with you and be able to stand up with whatever yeah, exactly. they say and be able to back up. Because uh, it is quite your stereotypically, I suppose, although we've got many, many ladies in there being stereotypical. It's the stereotypical pigeon chested masculine kind of 
I'm going to shout at you. <laughs> and start an argument with you. And then by the end of it, we'll either agree to disagree or, we, you know, hopefully both sides will have learned something. But no, I make it sound like it's terrible. It's not that bad. It's just the fact that, you know, you will be seeing practices in there about things that you won't be comfortable with. There is physical necromancy in there. There is people talking about hoodoo oils where you kill and skin a cat, that sort of thing. So this is hardcore witchcraft. Traditional, Traditional method, method is what we call it nowadays, yes. Um, this is hardcore witchcraft. This is not fluffy stuff. Um, but yeah, that, that's basically the no holds barred group. So if you're lucky enough to happen across it or manage to find it and get access to it, then please... Please follow the free rules and, you know, by all means, post things or have a little look at what's going on. But the point is for you to add your knowledge, you know, and hopefully we all learn. We all learn. But like, but like you said, because yeah. we don't police it, it's nice to know yes, that it polices exactly. itself. So, you know, it won't be us that throw you out. It'll probably be somebody that's put you off enough to leave. Yeah, exactly. Which, again, probably makes that sound worse than it should be. But essentially, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example that actually makes it sound a bit more realistic. Oh, OK, the, I, I've got one. You've got, we won't <laughs> name names, obviously. But there was, there was an occasion where a certain individual who ran some kind of uh, paranormal investigation-y kind of eventing company and then decided that he would spam the um, no holds barred a little bit too much with events, forgetting the fact that actually what's lovely about no holds barred is it's not strictly an area thing. So over half of them are not UK based witches. So we've got Americans in there, some of the French, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a couple of Latin Americans, I think as well. And um, I mean, forever growing, which means that, Obviously, <laughs> you having your little uh, ghost haunting, most haunted runoff uh, down the road from us means that two thirds of the people on on No Holds Barred couldn't access that even if they yeah. wanted to. Um, and then before long, he then realised, you know, after several people went, why are you posting this? You, you live 300 miles away from me. Um, to eventually stop to posting. Whether or not he went, we'll soon find out when this goes live. But, you know, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not been going for that long, but we have got, you know, back near enough 150 people that do actually practice magic. And this post podcast has come out because, of course, it is a private Facebook group. So we want to share some of the topics and things like that that come up um, in the, a podcast format. So rather than most podcasts, obviously focusing on either really academically magic or just the basics, we want to take that intermediate practitioner's route and to think about, you know, some of these subjects, share them and have two or three witches, um, you know, that are half decent, possibly even some would say adept. <laughs> um, talk about these subjects and and you know share their work and things like that so there will be quite a lot of interesting podcasts that hopefully will come out of this but it's not going to be your run of the wheel uh, run of the mill witchcraft it's going to be literally some of it hypothetical stuff that people are actually taking and trying to make work so you were talking a little bit about subjects that we might talk about in terms of the Apple of Discord and, you know, various ports of mythology and famous things that come up, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk and the Magic Beans. Well, what's the occult symbology behind that? You get a lot of podcasts that talk about that. But how many podcasts will have two witches discussing how you would physically make those beans? You know, <laughs> how are you physically going to create some of these artifacts? that the gods supposedly have um, is one of those things where, of course, we're practical people. So, you know, we don't just want to talk about mythology and do goddess worship and stuff like that. We want knowledge, power, and we want to start creating and crafting these magical artifacts so that we can use them and wield them ourselves, essentially. Or perhaps when it comes to the Apple of Discord, it's more of a case of, you know, 
kind of like a grenade, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> wow. yeah, more about that perhaps for that podcast. But essentially, I suppose we should probably talk a little bit about the greater work that we do in terms of obviously the No Holds Barred group, uh, this podcast, and the Witchcraft Live uh, um, Witchcraft Live Facebook group are all um, sponsored by or aspects of the company, which is the company that we both own, for full disclosure. Um, you know, uh, we can get basically the links to pretty much all of the stuff we do from the thothwitchcraft.com website. That's our... Um, but, yeah, of course, we named the company Thoth after um, the Egyptian god, Wisdom Magic... But, yeah, so I suppose we should probably talk a little bit about that. Well, you might as well start, oh, yeah, because otherwise I have to have a rambling, as you've probably noticed. We don't want too much of my <laughs> voice on here. No one wants that. <laughs> that's fine. We get the, anybody that's watched <laughs> enough of our online content already knows it's you that's like to talk in. So, you know, that's fine. I can live with it. I'm used to it. Um, but yeah, so essentially, yeah, when trying to decide on what the best possible branding would be, I think we kind of very, very quickly decided it probably had to be Egyptian um, just to kind of give you a real feel for the sorts of, yeah. should we say, level of mystery that we're hoping to actually kind of discover and and share with with uh, people, which is obviously a really strange concept from a witchcraft perspective, because obviously it's got a huge history of being secretive. So for us, you know, coming out of the broom closet and all, and trying to find a way to uh, share more and more, as much knowledge as we can, really, I think that the bonus of us as a team is that, you know, between the two of us, I think we cover most aspects of witchcraft some way. Um, what's that phrase you like to use? Yeah. Um, well, again, when we started the company, it was literally a case of we just take things that we don't like, which other people are doing, and the things that sort of make our stomachs turn and then create an alternative that we approve of. So although we've both... Um, been essentially professional witches to a certain extent in the fact that we see clients and do magic and help people along their way we've never been that open before until we kind of came together and decided to start this company and you know it wasn't originally Thoth wasn't the first deity that we thought you know okay we'll just go and we'll call it Thoth it was a case of having a conversation about okay this is going to be a greater being in the sense that this is a company that hopefully will flourish and, and work on its own. Maybe we should create some kind of corporate egregore to oversee that. But at the same time, there's no point in going down that road and putting that amount of effort in if there's something else that's willing to be that third party. So essentially it is, you know, the founders are you, me and Thoth essentially, because that was um, the deity. So say they came through. Yeah, the arrangement is that. So, of course, we, we use the Thoth brand. <laughs> and some people will look at Thoth witchcraft and think, well, witchcraft is nothing to do with Egypt. Well, how does that work? But it's literally just the fact that if you look at Thoth as a deity, his um, or its uh, loyalty is to the ma tragic, um, you know, practice of magic in that. And because we don't just teach witchcraft at the end of the day, do we? We teach... Um, magic uh, practices and occultism in general so we kind of need a broad a broad term um yeah and that is really what we're doing we don't promote one path over the other it's just the fact that we both live in the united kingdom in britain and the witchcraft has gone through a dramatic change and you know a lot of people are trying to put back the blood and guts that used to be there and we want to help with that, but that's not the only path that, of course, we help people along. We've been getting a lot of hoodoo people lately, haven't we? Yeah, we've gone through phases with a lot of Christians, you know. So, you know, it really depends on what. But the the breadth of our knowledge kind of allows allows us to meet each of those clients individually and try and meet them halfway, even if we're not necessarily an expert in that field. 
I think between us, at least one of us would know enough to understand and help them in whatever direction yeah. they wanted to. Um, but the nice part of being truly eclectic, because that's another word people like to throw around in the uh, um, the so-called witch, Ooh. or should we say the <laughs> insta-witch varieties? Or is that is that too is that too politically charged a phrase to use? Uh, let's just go with it. You've said it now. <laughs> well, we can always edit it out afterwards, I guess. But you know, um, yeah, with the kind of you know this social media, which that is forever talking about eclectic witchcraft, whatever that is, which I'm assuming is some kind of branch of Wicca somewhere along the line. Um, if you don't like something, you just assume that it's got something to do with Wicca. It's terrible. Oh, n- not exactly. I don't. I I think part of it comes down to the fact that there is this constant entanglement because there is so much of it online, and as that's where most people discover their information nowadays, rather than going to a library, um, they discover witchcraft and Wicca as if they're the same thing. Um, and by and obviously that'll have to be a different rant for a different day. But in in sh- we could do that. We could do that on the next episode if you like. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, but then we probably shouldn't set the tone that low, should we? Really? Otherwise, <laughs> think of all those people we may have upset in the first video. But you know, I I just mean that you know to simplify matters and not argue it currently. Um, you know. People don't separate the fact that, yes, there are Wiccans out there who do practice, but they don't practice technically Wicca. Wicca is essentially a religion. So it's a a modality that you're using, and therefore you can be a witch and a Wiccan, and they are not mutually exclusive. Well, yeah. So, but more about that on my rant at a later date, no doubt. But yeah, going to the, the the clients and stuff like that that we see from the perspective that obviously when you get to a certain level in your magical practice, magic is just magic. That's what it is. You know, you can go in and out of one system because at the core, all things are essentially the same. So a lot of it is not just iconography, but if you understand enough about the energies that you're working with and how the system works, because that's what you're trying to do with occultism and magic. You're trying to work out how does creation work? How does the universe work? And then exploit it. (laughs) Or help things along. Yes, help things along. That's the yeah. I'd say exploit it as I just did because that's what that's what I tend to do. But you know, each to his own. But yeah, I mean, obviously, the business, the Thoth Witchcraft and Thoth as a company, we've got involved with even this short space of like the one two years that we've been doing it. We run psychic fairs such as the Great Travel and Psychic and Listic Fair because we hate psychic fairs, so we want to do our own version that actually as opposed to fill a room full of people that are trying to leech money out of you, why don't you actually run courses and have the majority of it devoted to helping people develop their own ability and do their own readings? Of course, we do have people doing readings and stuff like that. We've got slightly more hardcore in terms of the Bristol Esoteric Festival, where we've managed to, you know, we've only done one so far. We are going to do them once a year, but we've managed to get some really interesting practitioners that you you just don't see. They work in the shadows, you know, coming on board to kind of give talks and, and do workshops and things like that. At the end of the day, witchcraft is a craft. It's something that you do. So we don't want too much theory. We want to fill these events with people actually practicing so that they go away having done something and be inspired to not just going away having listened to a lecture or something like that so then something about that proverb you know teach a man to fish that one yeah yeah a lot of there's a lot of nets being sold and there's not a lot of people giving um fishing lessons <laughs> yeah <laughs> But no, I mean, who knows? I mean, we tend to approach things quite organically. So it's literally more of a case of people approach us and say, can you do this? Do you do that? Blah, 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 blah. And if there's a gap in the market for it, or if we don't like what we're seeing, then we just tend to go with it. At the end of the day, we understand enough about magic, you know, and business 
in general. You know, we're fairly, um, you know, smart people in terms of being able to turn our hands to a lot of things. Um, but we just go for it. I mean, a lot of people just don't bother, but, you know, it just gets to the point where there is only so much time and it's a case of, you know, not running before you can walk. You know, this yeah. podcast has taken a little while, even though we could have done it from day one because we'd rather focus on other things. So we've actually got five minutes left. Can you believe that? Wow. You <laughs> really know, do know how been... to ramble. I do know how to ramble, but it's not just me. <laughs> so I suppose that we should really talk about given that hopefully they might be hooked by now, if they're still here. <laughs> well, hooked or, you know, I've, I've fallen in love with adultery sounds. Interested, then. Then maybe discuss <laughs> some of the ideas that, that we've put together for what might come up in future episodes. Because, of course, a lot of these we will record you know them in bulk so although we have a list of ones it's going to be released every now and then isn't it so you know what do you want to talk about for the the second episode (laughs) because i've got it listed as have you seen the people (laughs) well yeah i suppose yeah i think we still go ahead with that one okay um and we'll we might record the Wiccan rank the rant at another day. But well, I mean, sorry, the discussion of witchcraft versus Wicca. Um or Traditional witchcraft. <laughs> modality. <laughs> well again, I can't even say Witchcraft and modality. Yeah. I was gonna say I can't even use the term traditional witchcraft because they no, because that's a new term yeah. now too. And, and and as well, you get a lot of you've got the big T versus the small T. So you've got traditional as in the sense of handing down a tradition and initiating someone who initiates someone who initiates someone. And you've got traditional in the old fashioned sense. I mean, when people call, ask yeah. me what I am, what sort of witch are you? Bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. I always say professional witch, um, because that's yeah. that's what sums up our practice. I think a lot of the time, if you talk about I'm a Wiccan or I'm an Alexandrian Wiccan or I'm a hedge witch or that, you get a little sneak peek as to the way they practice. But of course, the difference between us is that we've always got clients. So we've always got that third party that yeah. we have to mold our practices to. So if you've, like you've said, yeah. if you've got the Christian, you've got to work Christian magic to a certain extent. You can't get out the Baphomet. Yeah because it creeps them out you know and if you've got too many people that are even if that yeah is even fun. if it is fun if you've got people that are practicing hoodoo or and interested in hoodoo then you have to go down that that work when you work with others again a lot of people would just take their money and do the magic for them we try to help people help themselves so we have to work within we probably should yeah we have to work within their paradigm we probably should say there <laughs> We probably should say that we do actually work with Wiccans. Yes, we do. Like, you know, they, get, they get into the most discriminate. trouble, don't they? <laughs> Them and the New Agers. <laughs> well, they tend to. They tend to. <laughs> Divide and conquer. Oh, dear. I can't believe we've already yeah. started on, on that in the first episode. I am, I am ashamed. Well, start as you mean to go on. Because at the end of the day, like, it's going to be a mixture, isn't it? Like, we'll still have the main feed of... Uh, Facebook, the Facebook group in order to lead kind of what these sorts of discussions are going to be about. Um, so, you know, if people want specific topics that they want us to rant about, then we can happily do that. Or if people want to know more about a particular subject, if it's within our wheelhouse, or we know the ways in which to do the research to do so, I'm sure we would happily throw pretty much anything together. Then there's obviously the stuff that kind of we muse about. Um, for example the the whole kind of for lack of a better term the disney magic that series that we're going to do um where we break down individual cartoon movies that we uh, most people love and adore and kind of say well actually where's where's the magical roots in some of the magic that they're actually discussing yes maybe in a animated or a <laughs> a cgi'd way but what actually is at the core of the folklore, for sake of a better word, um, and the sorts of objects that we're talking about, like you said, 
uh, Apple of Discord is a perfect example. Uh, most people will have not connected that to Snow White, but we will talk about that at a later date. So those are the sorts of things that we'll get a feel. And obviously, you know, there'll be days where we just want to come on here and rant about something or other um, or share knowledge that we pick up because, you know, we never truly stop learning. Um, even at this point, the, the sheer mix of people that we have the, the luxury of meeting and working with, um, it just means that we do have new ways of thinking about everything as it comes. So, yeah, I can. When, so when, you, when, you, when you teach other people and try to explain concepts to other people, you really have to mull that over in your head. And teaching others will help yourself as well, because you've really got to try and squeeze knowledge and condense it down to get the point across. Whereas you may understand it in your head, it's putting it into actual English and into actual words and things like that is a lot different. But there we go. I can't believe that we are actually out of time. So if you want to know a little bit more about us, then head to thothwitchcraft.com. That's our main website. Um, and you should be able to get links to other places and other websites and other things that we're working on. So thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.